All right. Hey, Trust, you are off to a great start to the new year. I uh, wanted to just shoot kind of an update video, some of the things that we're working on and talking on as a team. i uh, also show you this a new artwork piece there. You can see that. Whoop. It's called the Patriot, boy, I tell you. I, you know, as much as um, there may be some opportunity, no doubt, for this country to improve, this is the greatest country on earth. Um, and I'm just truly grateful for you and I living here. I mean, it has provided more freedom, more economic, more uh, benefit, blessing, uh, and advancement of, of God's best for just multitudes of people. And so I shared that in a previous video about how I was pastor for International Ministries as well. And just, you know, boy, I tell you, the folks that came from different countries, they were just so grateful to be able to be here and the opportunities that the country uh, provided. So, but that being said, I, I want to talk to you today about <clears throat> investor psychology and the importance of that, right? So we, we go through periods of times where you have market cycles and with those up and down cycles in the economy, in the stock market, in the real estate market, uh, it affects people from an emotional standpoint of view. Now, again, some people say, oh, I, I don't have any emotion involved in it. Eh. I mean, we're all humans, right? Like, you know, and so we have emotions and that they uh, can affect how we look at things. And so, you know, our goal as an investor is to really seek to be not moved by the circumstances, but by the data and by the facts and by the opportunity. So number one, I think it's important to recognize many people as a result of the most near term, you know, declines that we had last year in the first half of the year of the stock market really affected people. You saw interest rates go up, you know, super uh, rapidly, the fastest that they've done in 40 years. And, you know, now that being said, it's interesting to say that you look at overall, you know, psychology, those things were negative. And then the second half of the year, as there was more of a handle on you know, interest rates maybe uh, in inflation slowing down and interest rates moderating, the stock market kind of took off. And so again, it brings a upswell of psychology, uh, well-being, like I feel good about things. Now, your goal would be to become not as moved by the psychology of the market, but to be moved by the reality of the data and the opportunities in the market. Um, and I know that that sounds clean and easy on paper, but in real life, it's a little bit different. So, you know, as everything would be going down, really for us, we need to be recognizing, yeah, that does create some difficulties uh, in the work that we're doing. Or as interest rates have gone up, that can create challenges uh, in the environment. And so that becomes challenging. But you don't allow your psychology to just become governed by that. And I say that because again, even as we come into this next year or already here in 2024, you know, you want to prepare your psychology for able uh, for the ability to seize opportunity. Meaning we're going to see and already have been working on a number of things where we have great uh, opportunity or great deals that are coming in and you need to be ready to be able to seize the moment, right? So, you know, we've been fundamentally focused on executing and operations and selling properties that have kind of fit to our timetable. And we've executed very well on that with uh, six this past year. We've got another handful that we're working on uh, right now. One's under contract probably to close in another, you know, two to three weeks. And then uh, several others that are, you know, coming up in the next three months. So um, you don't be moved entirely by just the herd of the market or the herd of the mentality. That's why you see, though, market movement, like even in the stock market where things were negative, And then as soon as it turned and starts moving up, people start piling in and become excited about it. Right. Like and again, you don't want to vacillate so gravely uh, between those things. And so I, I say that because, again, you know, there is going to be, as I shared with you, uh, data coming out, properties coming out where on the office side, as well as multifamily side, properties that are going to be forced sales. Uh, that represent opportunity. There's going to be continued uh, choppiness in the market. You know, an election year, no doubt. We've got a media that's completely biased uh, that, you know, they want to distort and present things 
in the best light for their favorable uh, candidacy. So you've got all this going on in the background. And then what I'm saying to you, and again, a great book to read, Howard uh, Marks. He's Oak Tree Capital. One of, uh, he's a top tier investor, been around 40 years. Um, actually, they funded a property for us years ago, back in probably 2015, his firm did. Uh, wrote a book called Market Cycles. Fantastic. I would highly recommend to read it. And in there, he also talks about investor psychology because in uh, markets are made up of all a conglomeration of individuals like we talked about in a previous video. Um, and then the psychology related to investors matters. Like even, you know, you go back into 2021, there's tons of buyers for commercial real estate properties because the psychology was like, man, I want to get a hold of the opportunity there. And then as interest rates have gone up and, and you know, uh, things have come down a bit, uh, the buyer sentiment has quelled. Now, again, we're still bullish on uh, multifamily affordable housing. There still is a reality that over the next decade, you don't have enough supply for an ever-growing demand. So Economics 101, that presents a good business opportunity. Now, you do have to be smart about the acquisition price and where you're buying at, quality of property, all those things that we talked about. But you can't allow the immediate ne negative things that are going on to affect how you look at it. So you want to inspect what is my mindset to am I being affected, you know, overly negative by what's going on in the macro economy? And three, is it uh, hindering or accelerating my decision-making process? And I mean that both ways, right? Like in 2021, people were just go right in, right? Without thinking. And those are people that got hurt, right? Those are people that bought super thin, you know, it, where we stuck to our guns, stuck to our uh, deliberate discipline, and that served us well. Um, and then even on a downside, you don't want to be uh, affected so much by the negative uh, information that you don't have the strength of decision to move forward on great opportunities. So again, I, I just encourage you to look at these things, evaluate these things, and I'll do more about it and talk more about it as we move into the year ahead, because there's going to be great opportunities. You don't want to let them lose you behind. You've got to see, hey, look, my goal for my family, and I'm speaking figuratively for you, is that I want to accumulate X dollars of wealth over the next decade then you need to be aligning your investments to the best opportunity to achieve that over the next decade. Now, a lot of people have, you know, we park money in cash because you're earning four and a half, five percent. That's going to come down over time. And you need to make sure that your money overall aggregately is pursuing what your goal is. So I hope that you have a blessed and victorious week. Always good to see you for this is the week God has ordained for you.